All right, so it's pretty early in the morning. I'm headed to Nashville today with my buddy Todd from Norton Pedals. We've got a few cool things planned, so I thought I would take you along for the ride. This is my first time going to Nashville in about a year and a half, so promises to be a good time. So stay tuned. Alright, so we just got here to Nashville, hanging out at True Tone Effects here for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be picking up a power supply for a new mini board build that I'm going to do. And uh, I think we're going to play the 67 Deluxe a little bit too. So we're going to have a good time. Uh, like I said, my buddy Todd from Norton Pedals is here. He just went inside, so we're going to meet the guys and hang out for a bit. And it looks like it's going to be a good day. does like the Nash thing. He'll source bodies and necks and stuff. Yeah. But um, you see he's got an ABR, so yep. the, the, the neck is routed at an angle. Yeah. To get the right, you know, the uh, right strength all over that. Yep. And those are long where they all the way is. And I had him put the, the switch there because the normal is just so cool. So his dad was a player. Um, he didn't play at all. I'm on, like, it's like early in the morning. I sit down. I, like, opened up a session. Um, and I get on Facebook Marketplace, yeah. and I saw this, and the kick was the guy also had a reissue that was listed. Yeah. So he knew the difference. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm looking up, you know, reissue prices and all this. Yeah. So he had the reissue listed for, <laughs> and he had that one listed for. Unbelievable. <laughs> so it did have the cord that was on it. Um, was the quote unquote original, but it yeah. had a hack job of like a Home Depot converter plug yeah. thing down, like the big ugly orange, you know, do it yourself three pronger. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So I took it to, there's a guy in Birmingham, Sam Timberlake, that's at Highlands Music that yeah. just knows these old amps inside and out. Um, so I just got him to do a proper three prong cord, give everything a health check, and yeah. yeah, it's been great. The guy's dad played, but didn't play, like never like played out really or anything. and. So it's just uh, really yeah. a case queen. Yeah, that's that's really that's amazing. Really clean and uh, you know, that's your original. I, let's see, is it in Oxford or Utah? It just depends on how much this thing was played and how much. I guess you know it's it's fairly humid, you know, here and further south. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, you could always pull that speaker and put something else in there. Yeah. But it, you need to plug it in and try it. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. yeah. Well, I want you to, uh, you, you know, you know way more about this stuff than I do. I would just have issues. But yeah, yeah, to me, the amp is more important than the guitar. Mm. I, and tone. I, I agree. Yeah. I think, well, 
you may have a different opinion. My my whole thing is like with the guitar, like I have an old Mexican Telecaster that was like the first like real guitar I ever had, right? Um, and just like upgraded through the years, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like needs a fret job, worn out, you know, that kind of thing. But I can make that guitar through that amp sound great. Yeah. But if I had a Hot Rod Deluxe and a you know four thousand dollar five thousand dollar Telecaster, I'd have a I'd have a harder time getting exactly. a tone that I like. So if you gave me two thousand dollars and you said you know you need to get an amp and a guitar, I would spend the majority of the money on an amp. I would probably get a Silverface Deluxe, and then I would get some type of Mexican Telecaster. Yeah. And that's what I would get, and I would be very happy because. I can roll the tone control back on the guitar. I can take away some of the harshness that a newer guitar might have. Yeah. But you can't you can't fix the sound of a bad amp or yeah. an amp that's not inspiring. A great yeah. amp is, is so much you know more important. Yeah. And yeah. you can and you know and, and if the amp is decent, you know you if you can fix amps with pedals too sometimes. Right. Yeah. And so you know like guys you know. Back years ago, they would use Dynacomps or Tube Screamers, and I'm talking about in the 70s and 80s, they would use those kind of things to try to fix, and they would just, that's that's when the whole era of like the always on pedal kind of started, Yeah, was yeah. guys using rental amps, and they'd be like, dude, I gotta, you know, I gotta fix this thing, and so, you know, you know, they would just leave the Tube Screamer on, you know, at yeah. like a lower setting, and they back off the control, and you know that was that was a thing, yeah. all because you know trying to trying to fix something with the amp. Yeah, and yeah. now of course you have the Norton pedals preamp. Yes, of course. <laughs> that is uh, yes. the so the, the end all be all. Yes, yeah. you don't yes. And you should power it with a True Tone power supply. That's right. None of this is sponsored, of course, but you know. Yeah, like so even just... if you <laughs> even if you have a uh, a 1984 PV Bandit. That, oh, yeah. that needs that needs new caps and such. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, with the Norton, you know, <laughs> TM. Yeah. TM. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put that like right here in the video. Just TM right. right there. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, y'all were talking about your rig earlier. Huh? I want to hear. You. This is your pe personal. It's, it's not. It's okay. not up and running. Okay, it's, but this is your personal one. It is. Yeah. We didn't talk about it. Oh yeah. It's, it's half and half. So. Oh, this is a. This is that that OG Norton. Preamp. Oh, gee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. the. Uh, you got to pay big money to get one of those right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not selling mine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. So. That's it. MIDI from here. Yep. Obviously. So MIDI's gonna. Well, the plan is MIDI will control obviously timeline, Big Sky, mm -hmm. H9, and the Iridium. Right. So, yep. Everything comes in through a pure tone buffer breakout box here, which is our which is our uh, buffer circuit. And then goes into the compressor, and then it will go into the uh, foot controller, the DPC five. And right now, loop one is the Klon or the Archer, and then loop two and three will be the Protein. Oh, it's split out. You can split those out. Yeah. You got to put them on their own loop, and then yep. into the Norton, mm -hmm. and then into the Clean Boost, which is where the volume pedal is. Okay, I was going to ask. So yeah. you are using just this as an expression, basically yeah. for the boost. Yeah, I love that idea. That's a that I love the idea of not running audio through my volume pedal. It's it's been it's been great. So yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then I'll have a extra loop that I can attach a pedal here if I want to. Oh, uh, to do like an audition Just kind do, of thing. Yeah, if I want to throw something in there. And yeah. then we go right into the H9 timeline, Big Sky, and the Iridium. Man, so, so hard to, up and then to the hard to argue with that. Do you have it set to? Can you do like a? Do you run an amp at all ever, or do you just have this set up as this is a direct? This is a direct. Yeah. I have another smaller board that I'll use with my Kemper. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I use the Kemper a lot. Yep. But this is just one, this was just an experiment. Like, yeah. I want to be able to just bring a pedal board and a guitar. Yeah. Plug a couple of XLRs in and have everything there ready to go. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I still I still love pedals, man. The Kemper is amazing. I've used it a lot. I love Same. it. But I still miss being able to go. Oh, I need a little. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that, so. that's it. That's it's funny too because I was telling him when I like was first trying out the preamp, like yeah. there's something that this does yeah. that, like I, I even in front of the Kemper, Yo, was totally. like yep. super versatile and like I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. I told him I at first because I'm so used to the like oh if it's an overdrive it's a dual overdrive like the Protein or something, but yeah. Yeah. like having that switching the sides actually was like in some ways like a small like revelation kind of for me. I was like yeah. oh this is great. Yeah. Like, 
again, especially just keeping it simple or just like, even if the Kemper sounds great, Yes. With the digital overdrives. Yeah. Something about that just yeah. makes it feel a little bit more like home. And I've used the Kemper both ways. I've used it with creating presets and yeah. everything built into the box. And it sounds great. Yeah. I prefer to run a pedal board in front of it. Yeah. And uh, and, and obviously the Norton makes it even easier. Um, and, and really, I, I'll set this thing uh, on the cleans on the blue side. And uh, I'll pretty much just leave it on. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it sounds, it sounds great. Yeah. Do you, so. was the reason for doing the boost in particular, like as, like using that basically and this controlling your volume because mm -hmm. you felt like you were losing, like having like some loss with like a volume pedal? I mean, pedal? It's, it's possible because of the buffer circuit, uh, because of the pure tone buffer, it's not as, as bad. Actually, I'll tell you what I had a problem with is that trying to get run a tuner out of the aux of the dunlop yep can't do it <laughs> you can't do all three of those very, you have to very, use the like really small barrel totally. plugs and so and then it's that long was one and... thing it's like well i want to get rid of that so yeah um, okay the dpc has a tuner out so that that'll just always be on perfect and that'll that'll back the ball and then of course you don't have to worry about noise when you're putting on top of a cs12 exactly oh no, yeah totally no yeah. noise issues nothing no. to worry about you can put whatever you want on top of that bad boy yep so yeah it's cool that's super cool and this is a sight for sure eyes too. people on that thing they're blocking traffic for it wait what the heck That's stopping this is the most nashville the thing i've ever seen blocking traffic for a bachelor party in an indy car apparently what on earth best kept secret maybe i mean obviously I'm people sure know about it but it is here, right? Yeah. I can't imagine it's much of one. Not with all this stuff. I mean, like, it's... It's been all I can do to find dealers online with, like, King Tone stuff mm -hmm. and, like, 
Hudson Electronics, all this stuff in stock. I mean, much, you know, much less some of the even more obscure stuff. And some of it's hard to get. Yeah. stuff changed um, and I'm dumping some footage and kind of getting a head start on editing this stuff big shout out to the guys at True Tone for being great hangs for hosting Todd and I it's a really really good time uh, learned a ton of stuff from Zach Childs that's Ask Zach if you don't follow him I'll link his channel down below just dropping a ton of knowledge about the deluxe reverb and old amps and old guitars and all of that kind of stuff I really highly recommend checking out his stuff and you'll probably learn a thing or two because I learned a ton from him today big thanks also to the guys at True Tone for the help with the CS6 you'll see this in upcoming videos um, in a new board build that I'm going to be doing so I had a great time in Nashville Todd, always a great hang. If you haven't seen, you should definitely check out his pedal, the Norton preamp, because it's awesome. I think it's great. All the guys at True Tone think it's great, and we're probably not wrong. So, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully more vlogs and this kind of thing to come. But until then, see you in the next video.